Konami literally just announced the brand new selection pack Wandering Travelers for Mars still coming out later this week, bring with it support for Evil Twin, for Machina, for Gunkin, for Magiki, but above that is two brand new archetypes, Adventure Token and Fluanderese, and in this video we'll go through the second deck on that list, the Fluanderese, and see is it going to be the next meta relevant deck, is it going to be the next Eldritch, the most annoying deck on ladder, it probably is, let's dive right into the archetype breakdown. So as I said this might be the new Eldritch in Master, and it's going to do that because its whole purpose is to floodgate you and to then constantly disrupt your plays in your own turn and it does that by normal summoning. There is no special summoning in this deck which means things like Max C are going to be irrelevant meaning if you're playing Meta Max in the main deck and if this deck becomes so popular then taking Max C out of your main deck might actually be something you need to do in Master, right? The way Flunderies works is they kind of split up into three subcategories. You have your little birdies, your big birdies, and then your spell and trap cards. And we're missing one spell and trap card, one spell card that is so important for the deck. It'll be coming out within the next three months-ish, so not too long to wait. But it is undoubtedly an important card, but this deck will still be good in Master and will still be one of the most popular decks because it is so easy to play. It is so brain dead, even I can do it. So let's dive into the Fluanderies. So let's start with these small birds first of all, your 4 level 1 birds. These all share a same effect in that they're banished when they leave the field and when you use their effects you can't special summon during this turn, which does make sense. It's a, it's a deck focused on normal summons, that is fine. They also have the final effect. They can return back to the hand from the banished zone if you normal summon a wing beast, which all these cards are wing beasts, so that means every turn if you summon your monster back, you need to add this card back to your hand. It's a once per turn effect, but that is fine. It then sets you up for your plays in your opponent's turn and your next turn. So your most important card by far is Flanderies and Robina, which is going to be a searcher for your level 4. And when you do that, immediately, you can then normal summon a like Winged Beast from your hand. So you can then normal summon the level 4 you search, which most likely is going to be your Eaglen. Eaglen then can search out for a level 7 or higher Winged Beast. And what does it do again? It gets you another normal summon, which will then search out one of your big boys. And then you choose both those two to summon your big boy. And then these two level 1s get banished and then they get sent back to your hand and they actually chain block the activation of your big level 10s effect. And so they can be really good at stopping things like Ash Blossoms or Negates, all that kind of thing. We then have the two weaker level 1s that focus on banishing more so than the other ones. First of all is Stree, which is basically a DD Crow in that it can banish a card from place graveyard and then you do get another more summon, which is really good. There's also Tokan, which can target a banished Fondry's card and add it back to your hand. It can also get banished spell and trap cards, which can also be pretty useful. I think it's better in your opponent's turn rather than your turn, but still, they're core cards of the deck. Then we have the big birds. First of all, it's Fondry's and Snowl. This is the card in Master which gets the animation, and it doesn't really see play compared to the other one. This is a Book of Moon on legs, an ultimate conductor Tyranno. It can do that. It gives all monster control piercing damage as well, but it can give you three normal summons in a turn instead of one. Yes, if you're summoning this in your opponent's turn, on your turn you get three normal summons. Is it going to be that useful? I don't know. I think it will be for later on in the game, but for early dual turns, I don't think it's as important as the other one. Now, the other one is going to be Fluanderies and Empen. This is your real boss monster. On summon, it can search out a Flandry spell and trap card from your deck before giving you an extra normal summon, but it can be any monster you want, meaning you can summon out for example, if you wanted to, like you could summon a Dark Magician after summoning M-Pen. If, if you really wanted to, you could do that. You wouldn't, but you could really do that. Also, as long as this card was truly summoned and stays on the field, the opponent player cannot activate the effects of special summon monsters if they're in attack mode. If they're in defense mode, they can. But what this means is it shuts down link monsters, and it means you really have to get rid of M-Pen before you kind of start your turn, because it's a, it's a floodgate. And you're going to play this probably with other floodgates as well. So this won't be a fun deck to kind of deal with. It also has the effect of being able to banish a card in your hand to half the attack and defense of opponents monster battles, which is fine, but not overly relevant. Obviously, the good thing is that if you banish a the Flanderies, then when you normally summon another card, it comes back to your hand. That's great. But that effect doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The main purpose is the floodgate and, of course, the searching for your spell and trap cards. And what spell and trap cards do we have in Master? Well, first of all, it is Flanderies and the Magnificent Map, which is a field spell card that you will be playing three of that has two effects. The first one lets you reveal a level one Flanderies in your hand to banish a different one from your deck, then normal summon the one in your hand. And what's that do on normal summon? It brings back the one you banished back to your hand. So it's basically a search card for any Flanderies in your deck, which is fantastic. 
And then you would get the normal summon from the one you summoned, and then, like, you can see where things start to loop around. It also plays around Ash Blossom and Joy Spring because it doesn't special summon and it doesn't search directly to your hand. So that's really, really good. Also, the second effect lets you normal summon in response to your opponent normal summoning, which means you can play during their turn, which is really good because it gives you access to some cards that you're not going to be playing turn one, but if you drop a card down in your opponent's turn, like the level four Winged Beast Barrier Statue or a level seven higher Winged Beast Mega Riser, then you've got some stupidly, stupidly good disruption in your opponent's turn. You either lock out their special summons or you balance a bunch of cards back to the hand and back to the top of the deck. So we also have the Unexplored Winds, which is going to be a continuous spell card that is only really going to be played at one in the deck, I think. Maybe you play it in more than one in Master, I'm not too sure. But this lets you tribute summon using one monster you control and one card your opponent controls. And that's not just monsters, so you can tribute summon your M-Pen with one of your Flunderies and one of their back row. So you could just get rid of their back row and it's non-targeting, they can't do anything about it, it's really, really good. You also get some hand fixing, which isn't as important, but for later on in the duel, it probably can be, so that's a pretty cool highlight. Finally, our two trap cards. We have the counter trap, the scary sea, which is going to let you bounce back a special summon monster opponent controls back to the hand if you control a troop summon monster and no special summon. So if you search this out with your M pen, that's a great combo, but also your opponent's then locked from special summoning the remainder of the turn, but they are given three normal summons. So you can beat over your board with three normal summons, then good on them. But finally is the Dreaming Town, which is going to let you get a normal summon in your opponent's turn. It's kind of okay. There's also a Book of Moon effect as well if a monster should be summoned. So it's fine. I don't think it's as good as the Counter Trap. I could be completely wrong. But me personally, I much prefer the Counter Trap. Now, there is one more card, as I said, that we are missing, which is Flunderies and the Advent of Adventure, which is going to let you banish a Wind Beast from your hand or field, then add a Flunderies from your deck, or Flunderies Field Spell card from your deck to your hand, then gain 500 life points. And this is a quick play spell card, meaning you can use it to dodge things like Ash Blossom Negates and still continue a combo. Or in general, it's giving you three extra copies of literally every card in your deck, which is just by consistency wise is really, really good. So they're going to get this in the near future. It's not coming with the brand new support coming this week, but it'll be coming within the next three months or so. That should be the timeline when we get it. So you've seen what the cards do and how good they kind of can be and how simple the combos are, right? Rabina into Eaglin, Eaglin into Empen, Empen into either your Field Spell or your Counter Trap, whichever one you want or in your hand, and you could do much more than that. Then your opponent's turn, normal summon, and then you get another Surge, another summon, you summon a Mega Riser, you can then bounce cards back to the top of their deck and back to that, like, there is so much you can do. But also, because the deck is like Monarchs and doesn't rely on Special Summoning or the extra deck, You've got access to some really powerful cards. Things like Dimension Shifter, which is going to banish all cards during this turn, since the graveyard. And this deck loves cards being banished, so that's a great for you. Things like Pot of Duality and Extravagance, right? Duality requires you to not special summon during that turn, but you're not doing any of that in this deck, which is great. Or Extravagance, which is going to be banishing cards from your extra deck. If you're not summoning from the extra deck, then it's just a free draw too, which is really good. Also, things like Gold Sarcophagus end up becoming just a search card for the deck, right? Just they end up becoming a rota for your Flandre's cards because the second they hit the Banish Zone, they can then come back when you normal summon. This deck is so brain dead. It's so easy. And that's why it's going to be so prevalent on Ranked Duel Ladder for Master Duel. It's going to be everywhere. Maybe more so than Adventure, right? Adventure, I think, is going to be the better engine, right? Of course, it's going to be splashed into any toxic deck already in, in Master Duel. But this... This will take things to another level, and uh, that is my brief introduction guide-ish to Blue Wanderies. Let me down below what you think. Are you excited to play them, Master? And uh, yeah, I'm sure there are better guides out there, but this was just kind of my first look impressions all over the place, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next Master video. See you then.